So you want someone to ask columns and walls for your table, but can't really decide the best way to go about it. Keep watching, we're going to solve that. I'm Will and welcome back to the State of Play. Now, if you watched any of my previous videos, you'll have a pretty good idea of what tiles are likely to cost and whether they'll actually work for what you want to achieve. Today, we're going to start looking at solutions and the best way to make your columns and walls work without gluing them to the tiles. And maybe without having to buy 200 boxes of columns and walls. The Zone Mortalis Columns and Walls Kit is a pretty clever bit of design work. The tops are designed to not be glued in, and they come out and they flip over, allowing you to easily attach more parts on top. It works with both the columns and the walls. They use these handy little, I'm gonna call them teeth, you know, like castle walls, to stop them wobbling around, and it creates a nice bit of detail in between the levels when they're flipped over. It also works with the platforms in much the same way, and we'll go into detail on those in another more dedicated video. These stay together fairly well. It's never going to be as solid as gluing them together, but you know what? We've all managed for years without gluing terrain everywhere. Many of us started with flimsy folded card terrain. You might even remember when Games Workshop sold it. Townscape. A strong sneeze would have blown these off the table. So I'm pretty certain we can move a miniature without destroying the terrain. I mean, we paint details on models the size of a pinhead. There is a way to make your walls work better by gluing some of them into useful little sections. But which sections? Which, which ones are useful? I spent a good few days on paper, figuring out which wall and column combinations would be the most useful. And more importantly, once made, we could actually use them in other games. Stargrave, Kill Team, or Space Hulk, for example. I also wanted to figure out how to make extra walls from something else. Because somebody decided that Zone Mortalis, effectively a maze made of walls, doesn't really require that many walls. I've used a total of four boxes of columns and walls for this. The techniques for this will still work for more boxes or less boxes, so just scale up or down depending on your table size, and then you can add more if and when you want. I found that four boxes is a good amount to fill a 4x4 four four table when you combine them with these scratch-built ones that I'll go over in a future video. So as I said, which shapes are we going to make? We're going to make column and a short wall, you'll get four of these. A column and a long wall, again four of these. A column and two short walls, you'll get two of these. A corner column, yep, you guessed it, four of these. And that's it, that's your walls, done. Yeah, they, they don't really stretch very far, thanks Games Workshop. You will be left with quite a number of spare columns. These we can make into other useful parts later. There is something to note here, and I kind of kicked myself when I realized this, but in hindsight, I wish I hadn't glued the inside parts of the walls. I could have just used a bit of plastic card or something at the correct thickness, then I would have had 20 or so pieces of molded plastic that I could have used to make something else, but you know. Also, if you're planning on using these on tiles as sort of movable, semi-modular wall chunks, I'd recommend gluing them together, using the tiles as guides, like actually place them on the tile and glue them together and then remove them from the tile. Now, as I said before, you'll still be left with quite a few single columns. I can't take credit for the next combinations, as I learned them from Leonard Dime over at Rabbit Tabletop, but effectively you make a bridge using barricades and a pipe. This will require some clipping and slicing because it's a bit fiddly to get these at the right thickness. A bridge using platforms. Now I couldn't really see a reason to glue these together so I kind of left them separate. Then you can just make this as you need. And you attach some pipes to other spare columns if you have them. 
these pipe kits are becoming a little bit harder to find now, but they do come in a variety of Kill Team boxes. And if you can find them, they came in issues 55 and 37 of Warhammer Imperium Partworks for $8.99. Or you can pick them up on eBay, depending on how badly you wanted to get scalped. Do consider though that pipes are just tubes. And seriously, any tube will work, cuts at the right length. All these pieces can now go together in so many different ways and are not limited by the tiles. They're much sturdier because they now have a larger footprint and are incredibly easy to store away. Semi-modular. But, but, there's still just not enough walls. Let's see if we can fix that with pipes. I was lucky enough to have an incredible amount of these pipes. I picked them up from Forbidden Planet in central London where they literally had shelves and shelves full of these things. It was like nobody wanted them. So I kind of went a bit overboard and just filled my boots. And I ended up with enough pipes to replumb my entire house. I've still got some left. Like way too many pipes. The pipes themselves are four sections long, but to make a wall, you only need three sections. So just cut one of them off, just one of the sections. It's actually pretty easy to do with a razor saw because there's a groove already there. And keep that little extra bit because you can always use it for something else. Once you've got a bunch of sections made, you can decide how you want to put them together. These kits come with handy little feet that help with assembly. So you can use those to glue top and bottom pipes. The pipes themselves fit together anyway, so you can get quite a variety of options. Now, because you cut a section off, you'll need to finish with a cap on the open end. A 25 mil base actually fits perfectly, but you could just cut a 25 mil piece of card like I did. I used this cutter thing from Amazon, which was like five pound, I think. It's a handy little tool for making tokens or base toppers. So now we have a selection of modular columns and walls that we can put together anywhere we want. It's not glued to a tile, so we can make something new every time we play, and we can use this in a multitude of different games. I hope this has helped show you how to put columns and walls together, and hopefully given you a fresh perspective on how to make it work better in a semi-modular way for use with a multitude of different games. Next time we'll talk about platforms and how doing the same thing with those will extend those even further. Thanks for watching. It's probably about time you subscribed. I mean, I'm patient, but not that patient.